So what's going on everyone, my name is Mr. Dalek JD and welcome to my easy in-depth tutorial on how you can complete the Ancient Evil Easter Egg on Black Ops 4 Zombies. This can be completed on solo or co-op and if anyone is looking to do this Easter Egg then feel free to leave your PSN, Xbox Live or Battle.net names in the comments section to help you find some players. And this guide will be in-depth covering absolutely everything without you needing to go to separate tutorials. So if at any point you know how to do a step, just open up the description for a timestamp to get you on to the next step. Please make sure you watch throughout as there's going to be a lot of important information coming in. And lastly, there are no prerequisites before starting the game, but I would highly recommend that you run some of these elixirs, such as the Max Ammo, Alchemical Antithesis, just anything revolving around ammo because it's really useful in some instances. Now the first objective when we jump into the match is to obtain the Sentinel Artifact to begin the Easter Egg, and that's involving opening up the map until you get to the Amphitheater. Simply pick up the artifact and you'll be in a small lockdown where eventually Pegasus will spawn taking out the remaining zombies and we can actually begin the first step which is to open up Pack-a-Punch. Now in order to open Pack-a-Punch we're going to need to find a golden bridle which can be found either at this pedestal at the intersection of treasuries or on this pedestal in the Stoa of the Athenians. Once you pick that up it's going to spawn in one of the six armed zombies and once he has been taken out you'll be prompted by the oracle to navigate to the Spartan monument where you'll find this blue circle on the ground and all players in the game have to interact at the same time to ride Pegasus and enter the river of sorrow. Now when you kill the six armed boss it's also going to drop a part for the shield. Now this is the only thing I'm not going to include in the videos. If you want to know how to build the shield if you don't already I'll have it linked as an interactive eye or in the description. If you already know how to activate Pack-a-Punch then that's fine but we're going to briefly summarize what you need to do. Once you've ridden Pegasus you'll be in a new area called river of sorrow with two paths you can open up. So in this area, there are two sides you can open up. One of them is going to be Python Pass and the other is Cliff Ruins. In Python Pass, there is a cage attached to the ceiling hanging by a chain, which you're going to need to shoot down with a ranged weapon, which should drop the cage to the ground. And then you're going to need to activate your specialist weapon and shoot the front of the cage to release the eagle. This will spawn one of the six armed bosses again, so just take him out. And then on the opposite side of this area in Cliff Ruins, as you approach the cage, a bunch of skeleton zombies are going to spawn, which you need to take out. And then again, Again, activate your specialist and shoot the front of the cage with your special weapon, freeing that eagle. Make your way to the center of the world and survive here until the eagles have opened up Pack-a-Punch and a portal to the Temple Terrace, and that will put us onto the next Easter egg step. Now for this next section, you're going to be doing a bunch of different objectives in the map. This revolves around building the Apollo's Will Shield, which if you don't know how to do, there's an interactive eye on your screen now. You'll also want to be purchasing tributes or challenges from the Oracle inside of the Temple of Apollo. And what you want to do is activate these challenges and try and complete them to the best of your ability, but don't claim the reward as we can stack the reward. And the idea here is to do enough challenges that you have done at least six, I believe. And your chances of completing this step much quicker can help if you get a epic level reward. And whilst doing this, we also want to build all four of the elemental gauntlets in the map. And in order to do that, you need to find a dormant hand and place it in one of the four shrines. Now I'm going to show you very briefly all 20 spawns for these dormant hands. They all appear with a purple mist and to interact with them, you need to melee them. So the first one can be found in that crystal in the intersection of treasuries. The second location is here in the intersection of treasuries by the purple blossoms. A third location can be in the stoa of the Athenians in a pot right there. A fourth can be on another pot by this fountain. Fifth can be right in front of this pillar in Spartan Monument. If you make your way down here, there could be also one on the ground by this fallen statue. Make your way down in front of Zeus. There can be one in this dirt pile here. There can be a pot behind this fast travel portal right here. And the last and final location in this section of the map can be in this pile of rubble in front of the arrow. The Oracle gives you hints on where these are. So if you just pay attention and follow where on the map it is, you shouldn't have any trouble. Starting in the River of Sorrow, there can be one location there. There can be another to the left of the Odin machine make your way down in cliff ruins there can be one just to the right of this window there could be also one by this little table there there could be one next to the left of the bird eagle cage as you make your way further down on the right there can be a pot there on cliff ruins as we enter the center of the world there can be one location right in front of the shrine of uranus there can also be one just to the left of this fast travel here at the back make your way towards the venom trap there can be one in this crystal right here there can also be one to the left of the titan wall by right there on that crystal and then finally the final location we can find here is in python pass right down on the ground
down there. So in Solo, you find one of these, pick them up and take them to one of the shrines. We're going to start with the Gaia quest, but break it down very, very quickly in case some of you already know how to do this. So pick up a Dormant Hand and make your way to the Gaia Shrine in Spartan Monument. You've been a lockdown for about 20 seconds where you'll need to survive, then afterwards you'll be granted with the Hand of Gaia. Pick it up and we can start the upgrade quest, and we begin in the intersection of treasuries by this plant. Simply shoot the three red crystals, it will dissolve and bring up this small plant which you can pick up and then you can walk over to the shrine to plant down. The movement speed is slow during this and you cannot shoot so just be very careful. In co-op just have people look after the zombie. The next area is in Stoa of the Athenians. You simply want to shoot the three crystals, the plant will dissolve and we pick up that seedling and take it back to the shrine. A final spot is in Temple Terrace. Simply shoot the three crystals, pick up the seedling, take it back to the shrine and you'll notice a portal will have opened which you can enter to prove yourself to Gaia. You'll be on this cliff face with infinite ammo and after a certain amount of time using charge shots you'll be out of there and you'll have the fallen hand of Gaia fully upgraded. Now let's move on to the hand of Charon. So find a fallen hand and bring it to Python Pass, place it in here and again a 20 second lockdown that once you have survived you can pick up the hand of Charon and we can start the upgrade process. So for this all you need to do is stand in the river of sorrow's water and kill zombies using the hand of Charon. After a certain amount of kills, you'll be given a prompt to drink from the water and by doing so will turn your screen red. During this, you won't be able to regenerate any health, so be very careful. But our objective here is to find three coins. When you look at it, it will say hold to pick up Sharon's Obel. The trick here is littered all around this area is going to be coins, which you can see through the walls. But when you go up to them, some are going to be real and some are going to be false, which will give you a prompt to extinguish the Obel instead of obtain it. Your objective is to find the three real obols around this arena and then bring it back to the shrine and once you've found all three real ones you'll be given a portal which will lead you into shadows bank where you again will be using your charged shots to kill off a bunch of zombies until you get let back into the map and that is the upgrade for that one the next one we'll be looking at is oranos so again find a fallen hand from the locations we showed you take it to the shrine in the center of the world you'll be in a lockdown and once out you will be given the Fallen Hand of Uranos. For us to get this upgrade, there are three specific sections on the map that we need to bounce zombies' bodies off by using the Uranos to bounce the zombies off feathers. The first location is right by Pack-a-Punch, and just by using the weapon and bouncing the zombies' bodies off, you're going to release a feather which you need to shoot twice at, and it will fly back to the shrine. Another feather can be found on the cliff ruins, simply angle it right so when you shoot a zombie its body will bounce off the feather and shoot the feather twice in the air to send it over to the shrine. And the last and final feather we're going to need to bounce zombies bodies off is Python Pass right next to the Sharon shrine. Again once you've done this shoot the feather twice in the air to bring it over to the shrine and you'll then be given the prompt to go to a portal to Wind's Crest where again you're going to have to use charge shots of your new gauntlet in order to leave the area and that will be that one complete. A final gauntlet is the hand of Hemera so find a fallen dormant hand and take it to the shrine which is situated in the monument of Craterus. Simply survive the 20 second lockdown you'll be given the fallen hand of Hemera and we can begin the upgrade. Make your way to upper road and look out of the map slightly on this bridge to see this shield. Shoot it with a bullet weapon until it's facing forwards and then shoot a fallen hand of Hemera shot which should bounce off the crystal and into the pot on the bridge. If done successful, you'll see a light on that pot and we can move on. The second location is in Temple Terrace. Again, you want to be shooting this shield enough time so it's pointing straight forwards. Shoot a shot of your Hemera and the light should bounce off it into the crystal and then into the pot just below. The third and final location is in the Gymnasium Bathhouse. Now at the map, you'll see the shield on this pillar. Shoot it with a bullet weapon until it is facing forwards and then shoot a shot of the Hemera and it should bounce through the crystal and then into the pot. Now with each of the three pots in these areas we just did, you want to melee it with your Hemera and then bring the light back to the shrine in Monument of Craterus. Stamina up is not necessary, but I do feel it makes this a lot easier because you can almost fail this. And if you do, you have to go back and bounce a shot from the shield again into the pot. You see that I went to Upper Road, I meleeed that pot, and then I bring it back to the Monument of Craterus and melee one of the pots here. 
And the last pot was in Temple Terrace. So again, melee the light in that pot and then take it all the way over to the shrine. And then a portal should open, allowing you to teleport into an arena called Light's Reflection, where again, after a certain amount of time of being in there and getting charge kills, you'll be let out and you'll have the Hemera upgrade. And by now you should have all four in your game. If on solo, you need to make all four of these. If you are in co-op, obviously the amount of players that there are has to create all four of them as well. With the gauntlets upgraded and you progressing through your challenges, you'll get to a point where the fire will be burning rather harshly. And what you need to do here is with the Apollo's Will Shield out, melee the fire. And it's going to light your spear on fire. You'll now need to go around the map and locate three oil spills. And with your shield out, with that flaming spear, you want to melee the oil. Don't want to put your shield away during this because if you do, the flame on your spear will reset and you gonna have to go get new fire from the temple of apollo but the first location is upper road you simply want to melee the fire on this rock and you'll notice the oil texture will disappear the second location is on the intersection of treasuries on this wall you just want to melee it and the last location is going to be down in spartan monument on this wall right here once that is completed the next step involves you obtaining the redeemed hand of sharon and then making your way to the Spartan Monument and shooting a blood projectile down on the ground. Whoever's doing this step will notice that when they stand in the blood, their vision is going to go a weird misty blue color. And if you look around, one of the statues will have blue eyes, which you will need to shoot with your Sharon gauntlet. Keep shooting down a projectile shot on the ground and stand in it. And you're going to be repeatedly shooting statues one at a time that you see glowing with blue eyes. When completed successfully, your screen will shake and you'll hear the sound of a completion where we can move on to the next step, align the citizens. So with a ranged weapon, we're going to be shooting three different walls. We're going to start with this wall down in Spartan Monument, which if you shoot, will reveal a hidden compartment with a load of cogs. With your Apollo's Will Shield, you need to time it to throw it so the little cog falls on top of the big cog. And what should happen is a spear should be stuck in between the cogs and the cogs will stop moving. Our next location for one of these is going to be in the intersection of treasuries by shooting this wall right here. It is a lot trickier to see the cogs in this one so you can do some trial and error of throwing the spear until you get it right but if you are keen-eyed you're going to be looking for the small cog that's moving up and down to stop directly on the big cog once done correctly of course you won't see the cogs move anymore third and final wall is here in the intersection of treasuries you're going to shoot it and it's going to reveal a cog now the small cog in this is actually going anti-clockwise in a square shape and you need to throw your spear at the right time that the small cog is above the big cog this can be a little bit tricky especially if your brightness isn't turned up very high but when completed you will notice that the cogs will have stopped moving and in the center of the stoa of the athenians area you're going to notice notice three statues spinning round. Final thing you need to do on this step is throw an Apollo's Will Spear just to the left of the crystal by this big cog you can see in the back. This is extremely finicky to get accurate so I would recommend aiming down sight with your shield using left trigger while you throw this and you want to be throwing it a little bit lower than the cog that you see. When done correctly you'll hear a small ching noise and then the screen will shake and you will notice that the sentinel artifact will now have moved on to scepter and sundial as the next step. Make your way over to the intersection of treasuries and you'll notice on this crystal there will be a part for the raw perk just chilling there. You're going to want to hang around here until a six armed zombie boss spawns in. You don't want to kill this six armed boss at first because we're going to need him to shield stun that piece on the crystal so that it falls off. And my best advice on doing this as it is RNG based is I found actually shooting the guy in the chest actually caused him to make this attack happen. From the moment I shot his chest, he started to do the shield attack, which is the attack where he throws his shield down and stuns you. And and as you see here, the piece has fallen down. So you just want to go up to it, pick it up and take it to the raw perk, which is just in front of us in the gymnasium bathhouse. You want to go up to its left arm and just place the part on. The next step is to go back to the hand of Hemera shrine, pick
pick it up and place it in the raw perk's hand. What's going to happen is it's going to start a defense sequence where you're going to have a beam of light going towards this wall with a ton of zombies and skeletons. The skeletons are going to try their best to block the beam from either this side of the room, right in front of the wall that's being melted, or right in front of the perk itself. On solo, this can be particularly difficult as you will be in the low 20s at this point, and it is pretty difficult to stop loads of zombies as well as blight fathers that spawn in during this. So I advise a homunculus is to be used or using the Pegasus Strike and we'll be teaching you how to build that a little bit later on in this guide as you will need it for a final step. If you already know how to build it then that's great. I definitely recommend using it in the gymnasium bathhouse when you try this step but once you've let the laser do its thing for enough time the wall is going to reveal a crack where inside of it will be a chamber where you will see Ra's scepter sat there right in the window. Simply pick it up and place it in the scepter of Ra's hand which will complete that step and you'll know you've completed the step because the scepter of Ra will start lasering the pool in that room revealing another mirror. So now we have the scepter part done now we can move on to sundial so you want to go ahead and pick up the redeemed hand of Gaia and make your way over to offering of the Atalids and on this wall you're going to notice a symbol to the left of the statue of Danu with branches on it. You're going to want to shoot it and it's going to cause two more of those branches to spawn to the left of Danu and then above it. The aim of this is to hit both of these with one single shot of your hand of Gaia and if completed successfully it's going to spawn three branches which need to be hit in one single shot with the hand of Gaia. This is quite a difficult step and something which definitely isn't something I could do on my first go but I will show you a few failed attempts before getting the final thing. My advice is start in this section here to shoot that and it's going to reveal two more. I usually spray here with my first shot not shooting two of them but the second one does standing directly there will hit both of them pretty easily and then for the third one you want to aim just to the right of this balcony and basically spray away as you're hitting one right there as well as one just above it and then to the right above the mystery box if done successfully it's gonna spawn in one of the six handed zombies if it's not being successful then the symbol on the wall just outside the map will be there again and you can repeat this as many times as you you want until you finally complete this. Once you've killed the six armed zombie he will drop a spear which you can pick up and place inside of this golden puzzle. And once the pole is placed then you're going to notice a yellow line on the golden dials. Pay attention to that because we're going to be using it as a reference to help us complete this next step. But what you want to do is go through the round until electric catalyst zombies start spawning in and you're going to want to kill them on top of the sundial. If one is successfully killed, you'll notice the pole will now have electricity flowing through it. And a panel on that sundial will now be scrolling through a bunch of different symbols, but one of those symbols is going to be blue. Imagine this sundial as a clock, but instead of the hand hands going to 12 they go to 8 as each disc has 8 golden panels in total. The sundial is going to be shuffling these symbols you're going to notice there's going to be a blue one. Essentially what we want to do is time it correctly so that the blue symbol will be over the gold panel that's lined up with our yellow line. Now in order to calculate this you simply need to count how many golden panels there are anti-clockwise before it's going to land on the panel lined up with the yellow line. In my game Counting anti-clockwise from where the panel is open to where the panel aligned with the yellow line is, it's five. So knowing this, what I need to do now is watch that panel. And once it shows the blue symbol, I simply wait by the yellow line panel and listen for the fifth click. Once I've heard that fifth click, I simply hold my interact button. And as you see, it reveals that I stopped it at the right time, revealing the blue panel aligned with our yellow line. As you can see in my game, that that was correct. If in your game you don't get it correct on your first go, all you need to do is kill another electric catalyst on the sundial and it's going to reveal that panel again and give you the chance to try it again. So now I've killed another electric catalyst on this sundial, it's now revealed another panel which is now ticking through a little bit faster. This panel was also aligned the exact same as the first blue panel so all I had to do was count five ticks again and then stand over the yellow line, hold the
the interact button at the right time and it placed that symbol on there. I'll need to repeat this one more time with another electric catalyst by killing the catalyst on the sundial, revealing the last panel. This one moves very, very quickly, so take your time on this one. In this final example, the blue symbol would land on our last section on four ticks. So once I saw the blue symbol appear, I counted four ticks and then held my interaction button. And as you can see, it worked first time. If done correctly, your screen will shake and the spear will fall down into the sundial. And we can move on to the next step, which requires all players in the game to possess a gauntlet in their loadout. And all players in the game must navigate to the building of the amphitheater. And as you enter, you're going to notice there's going to be a glowing circle on the floor, which correspond to each player's hand of God, as indicated by the color. If you've got Hemera, it's yellow. If you've got Gaia, it's green. If you've got Charon, it's red, and if you've got Uranos, it's blue. Each player must stand on their respective circle to start this sharpshooter game. And once started, a spotlight will appear in the middle of the amphitheater with a color. Whoever's gauntlet corresponds to that color has to stand on that spot. And you have a very short amount of time to kill the zombies which corresponded to your spotlight color. If you're shooting them in the stands, you use single shots only. And if they are on the ground, you have to kill them with a charged shot. I'm going to show both solo and co-op gameplay here just to show you what it is like because you have to be fairly coordinated in co-op. In solo, it's pretty darn simple. You simply stand on the spotlight with your color and you're going to be looking up in the stands in case zombies have spawned in there and if not, they're going to have spawned on the ground. If you're on the ground, the zombies can only be killed with charged attacks of your gauntlet and if they're in the stands, they can only be killed with single shots. So as you can see on solo, as I go through this, every time I complete this successfully, you're going to notice confetti flying from the middle and you're going to notice the spotlight has moved. You need to be super, super quick to jump to that, otherwise you're going to fail. You have about five attempts to do this if any players in the game fail on that round before you have to push to another round. Once you've completed enough successfully, your screen will go grey and you'll return to your original standing position while other players go onto their spotlight. You need to make sure that you're very quick to jump onto these spotlights and notice once you've killed the zombies you need because if you don't do this quick enough, then you will fail this and you will have to try again. This will essentially go on for three rounds of five plays where you'll be standing in five different circles in three consecutive rounds of this back to back. Now, what is quite nice is that if you are low on ammo during this, you will always be given about 10 ammo in your gauntlet. So just about enough to complete this without too much trouble and without needing to use a max ammo or any other elixir like that. And you are under a time trial during this step. So you need to complete each phase of this as quickly as you possibly can. Co-op communication is extremely vital to be calling out the colors of the spotlights as you may realize that colors may have changed directly underneath your feet and players need to switch positions. Once completed successfully, you will obviously hear the sound and on your Sentinel artifact, you'll be on the step, cleanse the center. And what you'll need to do is have one player go to the right of the Spitfire wall by in the River of Sorrows and you'll you'll notice a door with a bunch of symbols on it. With a weapon, we are going to be spelling the word Poseidon by shooting these six specific symbols. Every single game, the order in which these symbols need to be shot at are random. So if you shoot a symbol and it lights up blue, that means that the order is correct on when that symbol needs to be activated. Through trial and error, you will eventually have all six symbols lit up on your screen. There will be a prompt to interact with the door. Now, if a character is playing as Shaw in this game, he needs to specifically interact with this door as well as Bruno. In solo, it's going to spawn in a bot, but a really cool cutscene is going to play which involves something rather disturbing between Shaw and Bruno. Once either yourself as Bruno or Shaw or the players in your game playing as them have returned to the map, we can begin with the final steps. And you're going to need to build the Pegasus Strike if you haven't already in your game. In order to build this, we're going to need to pick up three parts. The first part can be to the left here as you enter the River of Sorrows here. If not, it can be on this brick wall by the door we just activated. And if not, it is going to be by this fire lantern. The second part we're going to be looking for is going to be in the Python Pass area just behind this section of bones. If not, turn around and it will be to the left on this wall. And if it's 
not there, then make your way downstairs here. On the side of this wall, you'll find this hammer piece. For the final part, make your way over to the opposite side by Cliff Ruins, and you'll find a spawn behind this pillar. If it's not there, then check this rock here. And if it's not there, then the final location you can check is by the eagle cage on this rock here. Once you've got all three parts, simply go to this section here to craft the Pegasus Strike. If you made this earlier in the game and swapped this out for homunculuses, you are going to need to hit the mystery box until you eventually get given the strike out of the box. I'd done this on solo and I really regretted it because I had to spend 25,000 points to get it back out of the box. But once you have gotten the strike, make your way to the top of the River of Sorrow and you'll notice this little circle icon on the ground. Plant down your Pegasus Strike and it's going to cause Pegasus to raise up this crossbow. Once the crossbow has been revealed and Pegasus has disappeared, you're going to want to pick up the redeemed hand of Uranus. With the hand of Uranus, you want to do a charge shot in front of the crossbow, just to the left of it, aiming towards the center, and you'll notice that the crossbow will move. Once that's happened, all we need to do now is go back to the spawn room, bring out the Apollo's Will shield, and melee the fire by our challenges in order to light the spear. With the spear on fire, run with it out back through a fast travel to the river of sorrow and make your way down to the center of the world by pack a punch activate the acid trap and run through it with your shield out and you'll notice that the flames on the spear now have a green tint to it all you'll need to do is run up in front of the crossbow melee it and it will light the rope on the crossbow releasing the bullet towards the back of the room and the egg behind pack a punch will now reveal to be a portal into the boss fight arena obviously make sure you're ready for the boss fight by having all perks a full shield and a good amount of ranged weaponry as that is going to be best when it comes to this boss fight. Now on solo, I was running the Mog 12 Packer Punched and the Fallen Hand of Hermera. I definitely recommend one player takes the Fallen Hand of Hermera into the boss fight as it is a very good range weapon. Other weapons I could recommend taking in is the Helion Salvo as well as LMGs or Assault Rifles. Just make sure that they are all fully Packer Punched. And when all players are ready, interact with the portal and it will take you into the boss fight. After watching the in-game cutscene, you'll notice is that you have an angry Pegasus flying around the map trying to attack you. From the offset, you'll have a six-handed boss to take care of, as well as a load of other zombies. And the main objective here is once you've taken him out, is you want to be constantly killing zombies to build up your specialist weapon. The idea of this boss fight is Pegasus is going to be doing laps around this entire boss arena, eventually flying over you, and when he does so, will inflict a bunch of elemental damage to the environment, such as lightning, fire, making it very dangerous for you to actually traverse around. But as you'll notice, towards the edge of the arenas, we have two launches, which will take you to other areas of this boss fight. There'll be moments where it will be too dangerous for you to stay on that platform form before it would be too much damage so you need to launch yourself somewhere else. The idea is that when Pegasus is flying towards you and over you to shoot him with your ranged weaponry as well as your hand of Hemera as you can see in the solo game until Pegasus falls to the ground and you'll see this weird texture over him which means during this phase where he's open to attack you need to use your specialist weapon in order to do damage to him. You'll notice that once we have done that he will fly up into the air and this is going to be a long long process of just rinse and repeating. You're going to be launching yourself onto the various arenas of the map, taking out the zombies until you have your specialist weapon built up again. If it gets too dangerous from the attacks from Pegasus, just launch yourself over to a different area. And once you have that specialist built up, just using your ranged weapons to shoot down Pegasus so that he falls onto the arena that you're on, and then you can use your specialist on him. There has been some instances I've noticed where if I've inflicted damage to Pegasus as he's flying above me, and I do enough damage over time, he will actually land on a different part of the arena where he is open to being attacked with the specialist weapon. So keep your eyes open in case he didn't land on your specific section, but has landed elsewhere where you can take a launcher and then briefly put in damage into him. I'm going to be doing this for quite a few different phases and every time you've done a significant a chunk of damage to him, when you launch to another area, there will be a max ammo there waiting for you. Eventually, you will will do enough damage to defeat Pegasus and the zombie warlord will suddenly be angry that he is worthless and now he is going to be your second boss fight.
What happens here is the area that you are on is now suddenly the only playable space. You can't use the launches anymore to go anywhere else. You're going to have zombies spawning. You'll have the six armed boss spawning as well as blight fathers periodically. And what's going to happen is once you've taken out enough zombies, the actual zombie warlord is going to transport himself from that mound into your area and what you need to do is do enough damage into him so that again he has the same effect as the horse where you can use a specialist weapon to attack him i definitely make sure that you are being extremely cautious during this section because he can have lightning strike attacks which can do severe damage to you as well as fire attacks and when he is in the arena some of his attacks can be very brutal and lower your health dramatically so just be very 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 careful. You will burn through rounds quite quickly inside of this boss fight, which is why I recommend some of the max ammo elixirs, just because they will recharge very quickly, alchemical especially. But after repeating the cycles of him teleporting to the arena, you doing enough damage to then inflict more damage with a special weapon or your gauntlet, which I've just realized also can do some damage. Not sure if it's the same amount of damage as your special, but it's definitely a viable option. You'll hear a quote from him saying this cannot be before he disappears and drops an oracle key, which once you pick up, the end cutscene will begin. And that, my friends, is my full in-depth guide on the ancient evil easter egg if you want to see the cutscene in full i'll have it linked down below in this video's description and if you want to watch my entire boss fight with full reaction that will also be linked there as well but the main thing is down below i have a playlist link where you can find tons of useful separate videos on everything we covered in this easter egg guide just in case you need it but i hope you found this useful if you did a like rating would be very much appreciated and i'll catch you in the next one